a new year is officially upon us, which means that there are new fashion trends. And maybe you're like me and you immediately ran to Google and typed in fashion trends for 2022. Well, in today's video, I take a super big deep dive and compare seven different fashion watchdogs to some of the most major fashion houses. Today, we are going to be overlooking the likes of Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Refinery29, Nylon, Who What Wear, L, and YouTube. If you are new here, hi, my name is Amanda Walden. Welcome to my channel. Please do subscribe and join the fam. Here we talk about style, beauty, lifestyle, travel when we're able to, and it's a growing cozy community here online. Now, personally, I love to look up trends for the new year before I do a declutter because the worst thing ever is to declutter something that you're like, oh no, this is a ginormous trend this year. And all of a sudden I feel so inclined to wear it. Just so you guys know, this is how I came up with the trends for this video. I took every single one of these fashion watchdogs and I wrote down the list of fashion trends that they identified. It looks like a pretty boring chart, but if you're a data nerd like me, this is, this is life. <laughs> From there, I cross-referenced them. Who was saying the same thing? Who was saying completely opposite things? And which were some of the outliers that I personally could see myself wearing in 2022? A quick disclaimer before we dive into these trends, obviously you can wear whatever you want. And the fact of the matter is, a couple of these fashion houses literally conflict on whether something is in or something is out. And just that factor that we're gonna talk about today says that a lot of this is just art being art. Whatever you love to wear, wear it. Don't get rid of something just because someone says, that's so last season. Keep it if it makes you feel good. But nonetheless, I really find that these videos are inspirational and you probably do too, which is why you clicked on this video. For me personally, I think that inspiration lies a lot in color and that's the first trend, bright colors. Now a ton, a ton of fashion journalists were writing about bright colors being one of the it things, the it trends for this year. And I think that's because we are all done with doom and gloom and we are ready for like the I'm coming out moment. So bright colors specifically written about have been like the citrus variety, yellows, oranges, saffron, stepping out and being like, look at me, I survived a freaking pandemic. Now Refinery29 specifically was talking about purple or periwinkle being one of the trends for this year. And I could definitely get behind that. I like starting with a color because likelihood is you don't have to run out to buy new clothes to incorporate this new trend in your wardrobe. Likelihood you have some sort of color in your wardrobe, right? Because according to Elle Australia, neutrals are out baby. Oh my God. No, never would I actually get rid of all of my neutrals. And this is why I say, take these trends with a grain of salt. They literally said neutrals are dead. And I'm like, what? But I also really liked how L Australia specifically coined the term dopamine dressing. Yes, totally. I want my outfit to feel like a complete drop of sunshine in my day. And that's why I love this first trend and 100% will be embracing it in 2022. So from watching trend number one, you'll see that a lot of this inspiration is pulled from the runways. And the reason why that is, is because it's the huge fashion houses that kind of establish these trends and then they filter down throughout the high street. It's very, the devil wears Prada. That's all. So let's get into a couple of the cuts. It's mini skirt season, baby. That's right, it is coming into 2022 and we have been seeing them from major, major fashion houses. The likes of Chanel, Christian Dior, Valentino Garavani, and even Olivia Rodrigo who wore this to the White House. Jealousy, jealousy. Yep, I am definitely into the mini skirt trend. I started adopting it late fall and into winter and I'm so excited to start embracing some of these outfits in the new year. But specifically, what a lot of these different publishers were talking about wasn't just a mini skirt and then go. It was kind of that mini skirt suit option. So an elevated version of a mini that brings up that extra oomph. The only thing about this trend that I'm literally scared of is in a nylon, they say that micro minis are coming. And that is literally the version of like a mini skirt that looks like a belt. This image from the Miu Miu runway <laughs> sent like, 
anxious feelings down the back of my spine. I just wanted to do um, trend number three. I had only seen it in Who Will Wear, but it's actually maxi skirts, which is kind of a hilarious contrast, obviously, from mini skirts. Who Will Wear also talked about mini skirts being in. I guess we are just going the extremes in 2022. We're going bright colors. We're going high skirt, long skirt. There is no in between. <laughs> but as we go high and low in those hemlines, we are also going back in the timeline. Y2K, that fashion is just steamrolling its way back. When we're talking about Y2K fashion, there's a lot of things that come to mind. The midriff, that's actually another trend that's going to be in through this video. Low rise jeans, which adds to that. Butterflies, pull shirts, just just a lot. And that has definitely been seen on the runway. Acne Studios, Chet Lowe, Marine Sear, and even on the body of Bella Hadid, which we know and love, she looks super cute. But my number one concern is those low rise jeans. I kind of amalgamated from all these publications, a few Y2K trends that kind of fit together into this specific trend. And I love the fact that Harper's Bazaar specifically puts a spotlight on low rise jeans or low rise pants specifically saying, we're not really thinking the Britney Spears era of low rise jeans. We're thinking more a low rise that sits really nicely resting on your hips, Blows down, reveals a little bit of midriff, and don't worry because these trends are in the hands of fashion houses like Bottega Veneta who are gonna do their best to make it look as good as possible. Refinery29 said, just think of Jennifer Aniston in the 90s. And another couple of things that we were talking about with Y2K fashion was mod patterns. So those really loud kind of in your face patterns. Another article was talking about mixing those patterns. And this all draws back to the idea of nostalgia when we go through really tough times, and we have, nostalgia is just one of those things that makes you feel good. So fashion oftentimes will reach back into nostalgia or back into more stable times when it's searching for trends that are moving forward. I am so pleased that trend number five is in because this definitely speaks to my personal style. I'm not sure about you. Let me know if any of these trends do speak to your personal style in the comments below. But this is a word I had never really heard before, Regency core. Had you guys, I've heard of cottage core and things like that, but Regency core is speaking to things like corsets and pearls and prim florals and just that little slowdown of pretty in 2022. I definitely have more peasant style blouses that I really think would fit within this. And then as well, some pearls like these earrings from the Edge of Ember and in the Fro collection. But I really think I am gonna try to give corset tops a try in 2022. I've been starting to see them all through Revolve and I'm getting that much closer to pressing the purchase button. Trend number six really follows along nicely with trend number one, but in an accessory sense, if you're not super into diving into trends when it comes to clothing, an accessory is an awesome way to join a trend, and that is bright bags. We were seeing this in the likes of Harper's Bazaar, along with Nylon and Refinery29, but what I also think is interesting is that Nylon also was talking about bags that were more cylindrical. I'm so glad I nailed that that word, <laughs> I was a bit anxious to say it. But also unconventional bag shapes that actually go against like an anti-bucket bag trend, which I think we've been on the ride for a long time, are cylindrical bags. And we've been seeing that from the likes of Jill Sander, Armani, as well as Hermes. What I really like about a bag trend is it could fit any budget. You can really find a range of products. And if it goes out of trend, whatever, you could still use it if you really love it, obviously or you could just pack it away until it comes back in like three years. Some trends are cyclical just like that, but some are just here to stay. And the one that is here to stay is bra tops and they seem to be getting smaller and smaller as well as cutouts and skin revealing outfits. Now, I wanted to show you quite a few options when it comes to this, especially with the bra trend. Balmain has been really awesome with some of their bra trends. Gucci showing off their cutouts. Isabel Marant Marini, I love that dress. How gorgeous is that? But again, very skin revealing. Just seeing through write-ups online and just through social media, this has been a big part of Kendall Kardashian's wardrobe, for example. And the fashion trend with cutouts can be seen in pants, tops, blazers, and pretty much across the board, but it has never been one of my favorite personal trends. It's funny with cutouts because I'm always like, what bra do you wear with that? But then the other side of this trend exactly is a bra, so I'm like, 
maybe I'll just do that one. <laughs> I love this quote in Who, What, Where. It says, we've been talking about naked fashion for some time now, and there's no sign of slowing down. Another piece of this trend was sheer clothing, but I literally couldn't show you some of these photos because humanity as a whole online is afraid of a nipple. So I'm gonna link all these articles down below so you can go see some of these amazing designs and I don't get demonetized. <laughs> Trend eight is 100% going to be one of those Marmite things. And I've already been seeing it creep into not only activewear, but also on the high street. I know Aritzia has been carrying a couple of these, but it was also so awesome seeing some of these photos from actual runways. And that is cat suits. How cool are these? I love this photo compilation from Harper's Bazaar. It just goes to show how you can go from the most basic, just full black to the most amazing shiny floral pattern with a catsuit and absolutely knock it out of the park. Nylon also showed us a few catsuits, but they really mixed in the cutout trend as well, which made these ones specifically feel a little bit more risque. And they also do a major callback to show how celebrities can be so influential in high fashion, like Cardi B, as well as Hailey Bieber, Kim Kardashian wearing this on SNL, Kylie Jenner showing off her bump. There are so many influential people already jumping on this trend. Number nine was really starting to take a foothold in 2021. I think we all started really embracing trousers and well-built items, and that is actually going along with gender neutral style. This is where we're talking about the oversized and the androgynous and just mixing each other's wardrobe and having fun. Whether that be a wide cut blazer or a combat boot that travels up your calf, there are so many ways to style androgynous pieces. And I also loved Harper's Bazaar mixing in those oversized shirts that really could be a unisex piece. I think at trend number 10, we just, it's just a, it's just a cry for help that we all desperately need a vacation. And that is beachwear beats. And by this, it's that we're bringing our beachwear into everyday wear because we are ready and willing to immediately jump into vacation mode. But I'm not talking about that dollar store sarong that you're just throwing on to go up to the buffet. I'm talking about fashion houses like Chanel covering this on the runway because swimwear is most definitely still a part of fashion. One thing that I love that Chet Lowe has done, this is one of those swimsuits that becomes really stretchy and that is actually a part of Y2K fashion as well. So mixing in different trends within a trend. Okay, so now that we have covered our top 10, I want to just cover shoes and accessories and some outliers that I also gathered from my analysis. This one I find hilarious and this is why I'm like, guys, we need to just choose what's right for us and just look for inspiration when it comes to trends because Elle Australia was basically saying loafers are out. They are gone. They remind us of 2006 high school students. And then Harper's Bazaar was all like, loafers are the best. They are definitely trending for 2022 and we are going to continue to see them in workwear shoes. So just another contradiction across these publications. Both Refinery29 and Nylon mention the flat form, which if you're not sure what that means, it's basically like a croc with a platform. So loafers or clogs with platforms, those could all be trending in through 2022 and very specifically the clog. <laughs> now I'm sitting here right now being like, I would never buy a clog platform, but who knows? Six months from now, I may be rocking some sort of floral dress and saying to you guys, check out my new clog platforms. <laughs> in terms of accessories, I'm happy that we've already talked about pearl embellishments really being a part of the trends for 2022. And I think that will really show through jewelry. A huge notable mention when it comes to accessories I found in Harper's Bazaar. And we've actually already seen this photo in the swimwear section of our trends, our beachwear. This is from the Chanel runway and this outfit specifically is featuring the chain belt. It's an incredible way to elevate an outfit. Think of a very simple slip dress and then adding a chain belt to emphasize the waist opposed to a different type of belt. This is one that I'm definitely gonna have my eye out for and I'm not gonna bite until I find the perfect one, but what a great way as well to dip your toe in luxury without completely breaking the bank. And because 2022 is 
going to be all of us coming out, fingers crossed, in a big way. Chandelier earrings, that added touch of sparkle, as well as stacking your earrings has also showed up in these publications. One that I didn't expect, but I guess I could see just because Y2K fashion has been a bigger part of the trend setting for 2022, and that's headbands or headscarves specifically. And when I saw this crochet headscarf, I was kind of scratching my head a little bit, but I don't know, could be cute. Okay, so let's talk about the complete outliers, the items that were only mentioned in one publication and had absolutely no crossover, which just goes to show that we're all just trying to do our best in trend forecasting. So this was one of my favorites. It's called the goddess dress and I've already definitely been seeing this in through the high street and seeing it in high fashion is just so special. Now the goddess dress, as you can tell from all of these photos from Vogue from various different runways, it all has to do with that beautiful, Grecian draping and I just think that this is a trend I cannot wait to see unfold in 2022. So hopefully we'll be seeing more of this despite the fact that I only saw this trend come up in Vogue. The Twisted Trench was also one that was mentioned in Vogue and nowhere else. Have you started to see these? I feel like this is really starting to trickle in but probably is still just very much in high fashion. I'm interested to see if High Street ends up picking up this trend or if it just remains a luxury. When you have icons like Burberry changing up their classic trench, you know that they have definitely found their trend for 2022. Also, I mentioned this in the accessories, but shiny things that was mentioned twice, just all the shiny things because you don't need New Year's to celebrate. Here are the complete other outliers. We had trails and trains and stripes in Vogue in Elle, Australia, glamour in grunge, and nighty chic. In who what wear, slouchy trousers and preppy outfits. For Harper's Bazaar, they mentioned micro blazers as well as raver style. And Refinery29 also had elevated loungewear, which I'm sure we're all used to by now. And Nylon mentioned the updated Canadian tuxedo, which made me laugh so much because why? Whether you love the idea of trends or you hate them, I just think it adds some nice inspiration. And oftentimes when I see a trend, and I can maybe relate it to my wardrobe, I might style something that I've had in there for a long time that I just haven't knocked the dust off in a while. I hope that you found some inspiration as well. And if you did, please do leave a comment of what trend you might be interested in or one you might be like, hmm, platform clogs, eh? Sorry, I keep picking on that one. If you do love it, I love that for you. And that is just about it. This was a Sunday video, so I guess I will see you guys on Wednesday. And if you subscribe and hit that bell and the notification thing as well, because just subscribing isn't enough for YouTube, that would really help out my little nook of the internet. Hope you are all ready to rock it in 2022. I honestly think that it's gonna be one of our best ones yet. We'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.